right, so now it's time to do a video about my uh, Stammen Chief Givdul gear. So let's first start off, who is this character? Well this is Chief Givdul. Givdul is actually <laughs> Ludwig backwards. Ludwig is my actual name, it's not real fake guns, believe it or not. And Chief Givdul is the head leader of the tribe Stammen. Uh, and Stammen is just Swedish for tribe. Very simple concept. And Stammen is a group that we created for the post-apocalyptic game called Lodsband Reloaded. It takes place in Sweden, in Stossa. And I think it's about between 600 and 800 people that have attended each uh, year, approximately. So who is Stammen? Well, Stammen is a group of uh, hunters and they collect stuff. They are very uh, primitive uh, beings. They are actually humans from the start, but I've got too much nuclear exposure and created them as ghouls. Uh, they are a warrior tribe uh, obsessed with uh, electronics and robots and such and believe anything that is uh, a robotic or electronic is controlled by an uh, electronic god. So they collect the items of such an objective of the first year we attended the Lutzman was to retrieve stolen robot parts that was our robot. So here's one of the items that I created. It's just a Terminator uh, PVC model. As you can see, I'm quite a huge Terminator fan, so uh, using an endoskeleton was uh, an obvious choice. So this is a part of our stolen robot, along with, I think it was uh, this uh, AI memory card, a whole Nintendo <laughs> cartridge, along with other items that we uh, gave to the Game Masters, and then they uh, hid them among other groups in the game, so we had to find our way through to find the parts. We actually had to attend two years because we didn't find all the items after uh, two years. So it was a very fun adventure and our main goal was to uh, make the LARP feel more alive for other players. So we, we kind of did it to, to do shows for other players, not too much to get the kills and such that, just to make it feel more authentic and alive. And the LARP uh, Bloodspun, I can highly recommend it. It's uh, about three days. You have uh, in-game food, uh, in-game currency, and, and you can buy ammunition for the in-game currency that is uh, caps and such. So it kind of feels like a mix of uh, Fallout and Mad Max. A very immersive atmosphere. And I really love the LARP also because everyone who attends uh, makes so much effort into the characters and there's so much love in the community, so it's very fun to, to be in a very cool atmosphere. But back to my character Givdul, I've got many questions about it. How, how did I build it? How did it start out? So I thought I'd uh, break it down today and uh, show you how it was made and maybe inspire you to build your own post-apocalyptic uh, loadout. Well, to start from the beginning, my first year at Bloodspawn, I think it was uh, 2016, I attended with uh, Jim and uh, some other friends uh, and I created a character I called uh, Bleeman, which translates to Lead Man. <laughs> and it was just a typical raider looking dude. I got some inspiration from uh, Turbo Kid from the Skull Guy and I took this old uh, hockey mask from uh, Milek, a goalie hockey mask and cut it up to look more like a skull and I crafted some uh, gear from old wheel tires that I found at my grandfather's old uh, like junkyard and uh, big workshop. He got this old uh, old things from the 50s, 60s and, and so on. So it's a very very good uh, place to, to scavenge and, and find cool things to, to build from. And that was my first year LARPing. I had only done like Milsim before and such. But I got hooked right away because it's such a cool atmosphere. So I started to uh, do some rough sketches uh, of a new character that was uh, supposed to be a lone uh, Boba Fett type uh, hunter. But then Jim also thought that was a cool idea. So it's like, 
hey, you can tag along if you want, and then other friends tagged along, like Fredrik and Petter and Indra, and all of a sudden we was a group, so, so I had to redo the whole idea, so I created the Stammen, that we was a warrior tribe out in the wastelands, always hunting and scavenging for things or portals and, and such. Uh, so I reused some old material, uh, mainly the mask, but I wanted to give it a more tribe looking uh, kind of uh, vibe to it. So if we take some close-ups, I added some uh, jaws, I think this is from a deer or something. I bought these from taxidermy.se from uh, Amelie. And I added this, I don't know what it's called in English, but it's for electronics. Uh, I think it's from the 50s or 60s. I thought it would look cool on the front of the mask and also give the vibe that we uh, like electronics. Many people confuse us and, and think we are robots because we also have voice changers that I've hidden here. Here's the voice changer and you connect the battery in here. This is a Vietnam era 40mm uh, grenade uh, pouch that I've tied up. It kind of looks to belong there in the vibe, so I used that one. But because of that, many people thought we were robots, uh, but we were not. We never corrected people because it's always fun to have like a mystique to the group. <laughs> but let's continue, look at the mask, how it was built. Uh, this was all white from the start, so I sprayed uh, brown, gray, and some black, and then I took some acetone. And you can see, you, you get some of the white that come out again. It kind of looked like all the um, bones of uh, animals you found out in the wild, kind of that vibe to it. It's a cool uh, looking color when you mix it with acetone. Then I added uh, this, it's from an old radio and you can actually <laughs> pull it out to get that technically look. And this is uh, some old things from pulling a mirror apart I think. I just took old junk and pieces I could find uh, in my apartment or things that were supposed to be thrown away and, and such. Uh, the main concept was to reuse as much as possible and don't buy uh, anything new. And if I bought anything new, I was to use old things that I found at uh, flea markets and such. Uh, and here's the feathers. These are from an old <laughs> burlesque uh, uh, piece of cloth, I think. I also bought it from uh, Amelie at uh, taxidermy.se. And uh, because it had a lot of feathers, I was hunting for feathers and I just removed them. And then I drilled each uh, feather <laughs> into the mask. And here we have the inside of the mask. Here you can see a better view of each feather I drilled and glued. It was a lot of work, but definitely worth it. As you can see now it's starting to, to fall over, so I'm going to update it. And on the back here, I stopped by a road one time we were going out and test shooting a gun. And I saw there were junk laying on the ground. So I just took uh, the scrap metal that I found and <laughs> added them to the mask. I folded them up so it uh, fits better. Also get that kind of samurai vibe. So I mixed a lot of uh, different styles. And here's my old uh, mic <laughs> that broke so I just added added it to the mask. Here's the other one that I used to connect to the voice changer. And the eyes, I often get questions about the eyes, how they're made, are they lit up, but it's actually just a mesh for airsoft masks. As you can see, I have uh, attached the uh, mesh goggles from the inside so that they always stay on place, so that they won't move around. And I have attached it with some steel wire I drilled some holes through and also here I added some cloth so it gets all black and hidden and here as you can see is the mesh for the mouth it's just mesh from uh, mesh goggles that I put upside down and painted it with some teeth and uh, if you look close you can see it's just uh, painted uh, over the mesh and the paint I used is Molotov 1 for all 4mm markers. It's actually graffiti markers, since I also do graffiti at my spare time. Uh, same goes for the mouth. I used the same type of mesh and just painted it up with uh, some teeth and such. And this is actually from the old uh, Blyman <laughs> loadout. Some people are afraid to use mesh 
Uh, I have played Airsoft since 2003 and used a lot of mesh and had never had an accident. I have read like a handful of people over the years that had accidents with the breeze uh, coming in the eyes. Uh, it's a risk, of course, and if you lose one eye, you always have a spare eye to use. But uh, yeah, it's, it's up to you. I, I, I take the chance. I don't think it's that dangerous. I've never heard anyone get blind from it, only get crap in the eye, and yeah, that's not nice, but still. And make sure you get the thick one. They are very soft ones, but uh, make sure you get one from a good airsoft dealer, and you should be fine, but it's at your own risk. So let's move on from the mask and we'll go down to the torso. You can start out with the smaller parts. There's a MG42 belt that I added the second year we attended to get a more combat look. And here's some different kind of jewelry that I found at uh, flea markets and, and such. And this one I made by myself from uh, also items I bought from Emily at taxidermy.se. Uh, they used to be more, <laughs> but after doing a lot of uh, combat <laughs> They tend to fall out and, and, and get destroyed. As you can see here on the skull, uh, just some hot glue left <laughs> because the skull got crushed. Here's some small jaws. But I added this to make the more uh, tribal hunter vibe. Also added a small Easter egg with Skeletor from He-Man, since I'm a huge 80s and 90s collector of toys and such. And if we move on, we look at the torso, the armor. It's actually just an old motorbike protection of some kind that I uh, repainted. I uh, added some primer and then I uh, painted it with uh, chrome for a few layers. And then a thinner layer of, uh, I think it's Panzer Grau. And added some uh, yellow lines to get that more military look. And I also added uh, all the Swedish helmet stickers from the Cold War to get a more sci-fi look. And if we take a look on the arm here, <coughs> it's also some junk that I found at my grandfather. Uh, I added this sticker, which is a very uh, known Swedish sticker, I think from the 70s, that says uh, like Adam Power, <laughs> no thank you. And the old, uh, what do you say, hippie movement maybe, and I just connected it here with some steel wire. And this is uh, just some protection for when you play football, I think. Also found at the old flea market. Uh, but as you can see, uh, the paint has shipped off, so we'll have to replace this uh, for next year. Uh, and here <laughs> I added, a, I think it's a Casio uh, calculator. I used in game to calculate the value of caps and things we bought and sold, <laughs> so it had a use. But this is also a small easter egg, I think it's from the Running Man. You can see some of the guards having a similar design when they try to chase him. And if we look at this side, here is the <laughs> infamous Power Glove. It's so bad. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. <laughs> it, uh, was very hard to control in game. Uh, this is a non-function one I got off eBay, pretty cheap. But I think the look of it is so cool. And I always love to add things from the 80s and 90s. Uh, as you can see here, I added some small LED wires that is connected to here. You push the button and it lights up. Sadly, it has just recently broken, so I have to repair it, but it uh, made it through both of the games, so I'm very happy for that. And I use this a lot for my greeting move, as you can see in the movie we made. <laughs> and if we continue here, here's some piece of armor. This is actually a Falcon beer sign. It's a typical Swedish beer. And on the other side, there's the holster. This is a Czechoslovakian holster for a VC61 Scorpion. Here you can see even more 80s Game Boy pouch <laughs> that I put my caps in and such. And here's some more armor. It's kind of hard to reach in there, but it says like protection bunker. These are very typical Swedish uh, signs that they made during the Cold War. 
if there would be a big war breakout with bombs and such, you would need these. And then I just made it dirty and added it as armor. And we continue down. Here is a crotch protection. This is a mat inside from, a, I think, an old Volvo truck, also found at my grandfather's junkyard. And here's a leg piece, also found at the flea market. I painted it up red and I made some stickers in Photoshop and printed them out. Some of them have fallen off and have started to fall off. Some of you might recognize them and yes, they are from the 80s anime Akira from uh, Canada's uh, uh, very iconic bike. So another Easter egg. Uh, on this side, just old uh, knee pad. I used to have another protection here, but it has fallen off and I can't find it. And if we take a look at the back, here is the orange cape. This is actually a World War II Italian, I think it's called Poncho, that I uh, just added as a cape. I like the colors and the look of it. I try to use uh, a lot of uh, colors that's kind of connected to Earth, natural colors as much as possible. And if we open up the cape, here I have an uh, old pipe that I added to hold the katana. I rarely use this, but I think it's a very cool uh, touch for the character. Uh, for the kind of also samurai look. This is a Kalimasil. I think it's also called in English buffer uh, sword. So it's uh, made from, uh, I think it's uh, latex. As you can see, it's uh, soft. You can uh, hit people without actually hurting them. So uh, this was used at some times to execute survivors after <laughs> long battles. And here is an old, I think it's late war Vietnam pouch or maybe 80s since it's uh, nylon. I have my water canteen here because you really need to drink when you're out and moving around. And I used a long hose that I put inside the canteen and snuck under the mask because we never remove the mask during the game. And here's the boots I used, yeah, rubber ones so the water won't get in. Uh, or that was the plan because they are very old, but they are steel tip. I like the look that I got with the whole character. To achieve this look, I did take some inspiration from various sources. Jaws I took from Predator to get that more Predator looking vibe. And as you see here, there's a Swedish Mauser belt which is common in the Star Wars universe, for example. And also to get that uh, tribe vibe, I looked at a lot of uh, old studios of uh, New Doom Camp. He has uh, short movies, one is called Adam. There are some characters there that have a cool uh, tribe uh, vibe. And of course, some from Simon Stolenhag, from his Vagabond characters. I took the feathers. I thought it was a cool touch along with the eyes and a cape and of course I mixed it all up with my own design but it's always nice to have various inspiration sources and I also visited Simon one time with this costume and it was a very fun meeting. It looked like this. <laughs>
now I thought I strip it down piece by piece and see how it looks when I assemble it from the bottom and up. Okay, so here's the basic clothing. As you can see, it's still very uh, natural colors with the light brown and beige. Uh, and the pants, they're actually East German pants. They use a lot of surplus, things that are cheap. They have these braces to carry the pants so you don't have to adjust the belt every now and then pull the pants up because it's a, a lot of uh, walking in the game. I'm not sure where these uh, braces are from. I actually found them in a big box of uh, AK slings from the Balkan War that I bought a long time ago. Uh, the shirt is uh, Swedish shirt. I think it's from the World War II and maybe even older than that. I bought it from an old man who had an old barn with old military stuff that he bought earlier a long time ago and sold off very cheap. So I think this was like one dollar or something. <laughs> so that uh, was nice. Uh, and to dirty it up and make it look used, use some acrylic paint. This one is called Mars Black, so it's kind of a, a dirt looking paint. Water it out and I yeah, just paint it all over to make it look old and dirty. And for this year, I actually think I could use some more because it's falling off uh, when we use it. This is a German uh, rig. I think it's from maybe the, the 80s. This is also a very common surplus uh, item. I see many other post-apocalyptic crafters uh, using it. So this is a very good basic thing to, to add to start with. And I actually got this from my good friend Macan from Insane MC, so thank you for that. It was a good base to start out with. And why I like it is because, once again, there's uh, braces, so you uh, even out the weight, because, as I said, it's a lot of walking. You put it on like this. And now I have uh, two armors on each side, and here I have my water, and after that it's time to add a Swedish Mauser belt. This is very good to, to store things in. I can still hear there's some <laughs> cap currency from the game in the pockets. This is a Czechoslovakian uh, Scorpion uh, submachine gun pouch, or machine pistol. And here you can see how super easy I have attached the <laughs> groin protection. And the holes here is from when I shot it with the shotgun from my first character. You can still see the lead <laughs> sticking out. That was a fun uh, addition. Nicely rest on the other harness. Just adjust so I have my sidearm close by. This is actually connected to a bungee cord in my armor later, so it sticks out and it's very easy to pull out your gun if you need. And here I have a small hook if I need to hook something. Maybe I found a robot head and I don't uh, want to carry it in my hand, so I can just put it into the gear and carry it like a trophy with me. After that I usually add my leg protections and to secure it even more so it won't uh, pop up when you run around I added uh, these small clips and bolted them together so there's no way they're popping off that actually happened the first year so this is an update for the year two we used it. So having something to protect your knees when you go down is, is very, very appreciated especially with so much junk playing around, game area and such, so I highly recommend to get something for your knees. Here's the other one, just a basic knee pad. And I actually found the missing leg protection. It uh, fell out when I disassembled the mannequin. <laughs> so here, as you can see, it's uh, just football protection for your leg. And here's a sushi roller with some wooden panels. Also cheap and easy and you just use the acrylic paint. It will look dirty and old and used. It also adds that uh, natural tribal look that you use things from the environment like wooden and trees. Just old junk. Okay, so I'm done from the bottom and up. Now it's time for the armor. It's a big and heavy piece as you can see. The cape and mannequins is all put together. And for the hands, I just use these very common work gloves 
these are extra gyms because <laughs> I haven't found the ones I used for the LARP. Those ones are more dirty and fit the look, but this is just to show you how it looks together. These are thin gloves, so you can use them for small items and such. Here you can see I have reinforced the power glove, so it will have a more tight fit. Yeah, it's so bad! Jeez. This is actually very, very heavy. I think it's about 100 rounds. But I really like the body it creates. Then I use the, uh, the hood. It's to hide all the skin areas so you can see through the mask. It's time to add the necklace and the last necklace. As you can see it's reinforced with the steel wire so you can bend it out to get a more wide spread of it. And before I put over the mask I'm going to start the mic. I've got many questions. What voice changer am I using? It's just generic. Standard one from eBay for about $30. That uh, gym actually updated with a cord so you can use airsoft batteries because the battery that it comes with is crap. It will run out after half an hour. And I use three of these big batteries, one for each day, so I have them already charged. 